So today I'm going to show you guys how to do a teddy bear cut. This is a Pomeranian and a Poodle mix, so she has a really nice coat to work with. The first thing you need to do is you have to brush out the entire dog. You won't be able to get the haircut that you're looking for if there's any mats in your dog's coat. So first I start by using my All Systems slicker brush and I brush through the entire dog first. I'm starting from the bottom of the dog's legs and working my way up because this is the easiest way to brush them without causing any pain. I really like this particular slicker brush because it doesn't cause as much pulling as my Chris Christensen brush does, although that one does work really well as well. Particularly on doodle coats or double coated dogs, I like it the best. Somebody on TikTok suggested this brush to me, so I decided to try it out and it did not disappoint me. So I found a mat, so it's a very small mat, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush in the opposite direction for a while just to try to soften it, and then I'm going to brush down again, and I will repeat that process until I can either remove the mat or make it small enough that I can go through it with my comb afterwards. I know a lot of you are following me because you think I'm this amazing groomer, and while I do think I am good at my job, it's important to remember that I am a pet groomer. So I do not groom to the quality of breed standards. I was never really taught how to do breed standard clips. And anyone who has ever called me has never requested a breed standard cut before. So I've never actually really practiced doing them. I was taught how to groom by a self-taught groomer. So I do a lot of things differently from other groomers that have learned uh, from professionals or have gone to school to groom. A lot of people will comment on my post saying that I'm doing something incorrectly. While I do think that there are many ways to do the same things, I don't do things the way other groomers do because I wasn't taught by a master groomer. So if you want to follow me because you want to learn how to maintain your pet at home or you want to be able to do pet grooms for clients, I can definitely teach you how to do that. But if you're looking to find very high quality grooming tips and tricks, I'm definitely not the person that you want to follow. There are other groomers on YouTube that are really amazing and I could probably do what they do if I had the proper training or if I looked into it more or if I had people that actually wanted me to do those haircuts. But I don't breed show dogs. Sorry, not breed. I don't groom show dogs, so I don't learn how to do those things very often because I'm not asked to do them. I definitely have a lot of happy clients, but I do pet grooms, so easy pet clips. Rosie is a dog that I get to do something a little bit more fun with, which is nice because I usually do the same kind of shave downs every single day. But with Rosie, I get to do a little bit more of a cuter haircut. So again, I'm starting from the bottom and working my way up. I like to hold them by the elbows when I'm doing their legs, that way they don't pull because when they pull it can be painful for them and for me trying to hold on. While it looks like I'm restraining her, I am restraining her but it's not um, anything that is bothering her in any way. She's a really good dog and she doesn't seem to care much about the grooming process. She doesn't know it but by me brushing her with this slicker brush I'm actually making it easier on her because when I go to go through her with the comb it's not going to cause any pulling or pain. So this is a mat splitter. So I found a mat in her back, same back leg that I was brushing before. So I'm just cutting through the mat with my mat splitter to make them smaller. It seems to be on the same spot on both back legs. When you make them smaller then you brush through them afterwards with the slicker brush or the comb, it's much easier to get through them. You don't want to be pulling too hard, you just want to take little pieces from the mat and cut through them with the mat splitter, which is very similar to an envelope opener. I recently learned about this tool, I never had it before, and it has definitely made all the difference. So now I'm going to switch to my metal comb, and I'm just going to start from the bottom and work my way up again, getting through those mats. If I feel like it's pulling too much, I will switch back to the mat clip sorry, the mat splitter, to get through them again. So some of you have asked me how I got into grooming. So I was actually a hairdresser first. I was in hairdressing school, and I realized that it really wasn't for me. Although I liked working on hair, I didn't particularly like working with people all day long. Um, so I actually went to a local grooming shop that summer 
thinking I was just going to get a part-time job working as a bather. And she didn't hire me right away. I had to go back and bring my dog in for grooming and basically beg her for a job. So she finally did give me a job and I started as a bather, bathing and blow drying dogs and brushing them out and getting them ready for their haircuts. And she said she saw something in me and wanted to teach me how to groom. So I worked for her after that for two months for free while she trained me how to groom dogs. And then after that, I worked for her for about a year until I opened my own business. I wouldn't necessarily suggest opening up your own business that soon. It did work out for me, but I will say I definitely made a lot of mistakes in the beginning. If I had to do it over again, I'd probably work for her or somebody else so I could learn a little bit more from someone else for a bit longer before I opened up my own place, just because maybe I wouldn't have made some of those mistakes. I think it's important to get a job at multiple different salons so that you learn how different people do things because they, we don't always do them the same. As I said, I learned from a self-taught groomer at a time where YouTube wasn't available. She was in her 60s. So she just taught herself how to do everything and then taught me. I learned so many new things since being in this business, talking to other groomers, following grooming groups on Facebook, meeting friends in the show world, and they have showed me how to do things that I didn't even know were possible. And they've also shown me how to do them easier. One of the mistakes that I felt the person who taught me how to groom made was she did not want to invest in expensive equipment. She used everything cheap or handmade, and when they would break or she would need new ones, she'd be very upset about it. And when I looked into it, I realized you definitely have to spend the money to get top quality products and equipment if you want to be able to do not only a good job, but to do a quicker job so that you can groom more dogs in a day. The way we were doing it at the salon that I was taught was very slow, so much more work, and at the end of the day, you're not fitting in as many dogs as you could. So I'll get into that a little bit more in some of my other videos, but one of the things that I wanna tell people if they're starting out to groom professionally, definitely join groomers groups on Facebook. Learn everything that you can possibly learn about grooming dogs from them ask for product and equipment recommendations, you're going to see things that are super expensive and think to yourself, is there a cheaper way for me to do this? And there might be, but the equipment is expensive for a reason. It helps us tremendously. It makes our job easier. So spend the money because you won't regret it. Make sure you're getting very good high velocity dryers because it'll make the difference between a husky taking three hours to groom and a husky taking an hour and a half to groom. And that's a big difference in time. And if you'd like to spend a little bit more time and use cheaper equipment, that's fine. But then you have to take into consideration that you're doing more work. So you need to charge more for the work that you're doing. That's another thing that I find with a lot of groomers is that they sell themselves short. They offer super cheap prices, which I'll be honest, was a mistake that I definitely made in the beginning. And while the customers are happy about the super cheap prices, at the end of the day, you're selling yourself short. Our job is not easy. It's a lot of hard work, both mentally and physically. And although we love the animals and we get to work with animals all day long, we deserve to get paid for the service that we're providing. It is not the same as a human getting a haircut. So to go back to Rosie's groom, I'm using a three and three quarter skip tooth blade on her back and her torso. So I'm gonna do her legs in a different blade. A lot of groomers do not like skip tooth blades. Um, the reason for that is that they can be dangerous. They are very sharp and pointy. So if you're a first time groomer, I would avoid using a skip tooth. I would try potentially using a full tooth or you can actually use a comb attachment blade that is very similar to the three and three quarter. So a comb attachment blade that is gonna be similar to the three and three quarter is going to be a half inch attachment comb. So you put a 30 on your clipper and then you just attach the comb and that's gonna be the same length as the three and three quarter skip tooth. I just prefer the skip tooth blades. I was trained on them. I use them all the time. I've actually never injured a dog with a skip tooth blade before and I didn't even know that that was a thing that groomers were concerned about because I've never had that happen to me before. So maybe that's just dumb luck. 
Anyways, as I'm shaving her body, I'm making sure I'm going over her in strokes to remove any lines. And I'm using my clipper and going around her leg joints so that I can kind of make it look like a little bit like she's wearing pants. So if you see the way that I'm shaving down, I'm making sure I stop just above her elbow and I'm going to shave round. The reason why I shave down when I do that and I don't just cut around in a circle is because if you cut around in a circle, you're gonna cause a lot of lines and it's gonna be difficult to blend them in afterwards. So you're just going to shave towards the leg and shave down and then stop. I don't know if you can understand what I'm saying completely, but I'm not shaving through to her leg. I'm just leaving them a little bit puffy at the top. We will fix that afterwards and blend it in. I'm also making sure that I'm not shaving the top of her head with the same blade. This is just going to be the body and the torso area. So I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. It's hard to get good angles for me to tape to show you because I can't continue to move my camera around the whole time that I'm grooming. But you can see what I mean by this angle when I say I'm leaving the arm and the leg puffy. So I shaved down on those areas in order to get that and stopped just above her elbow. So when I'm shaving the sides of the dog, I'm not shaving directly down. I'm shaving a little bit on an angle and that helps to prevent any lines from happening in the coat. With Rosie's hair in particular, it's difficult to cause lines. It's very easy to blend them in, but with other dogs, it might not be. So typically with any dog that I groom, when I'm grooming their sides, I will shave on an angle down, but I won't shave straight down. I see a lot of groomers on TikTok uh, shaving completely down on the sides, and then they spend a lot of time blending that in afterwards. So there is a secret to shave on an angle instead of shaving right down. I will eventually, hopefully, have an Amazon store coming soon where I can show you where I get all of my products and recommend them to different breeds. It'll be easier to direct you to one spot. So in order to shave her neck, as you can see here, the way that I'm shaving down above the elbow and how I'm not just going around the leg, I'm shaving just straight down with the clippers. I know I keep repeating myself, but it's very important to do that when you're shaving and leaving puffy legs. Otherwise, it won't look right. It'll look very defined and you want it to be a little bit blended in. There are certain ways that we restrain dogs when we're grooming them and usually it means we're holding their hair at the bottom of their chin to keep them in place. Teach your dog, if you're doing your own at home or the dogs that you're grooming, that holding their hair underneath their chin is just a part of life and that's how we do our job. So when I shave the chest area, I'm lifting her head up and I'm just shaving straight down. She has some matting in there so it won't go through completely, so I'll have to use a shorter blade later on to remove that matting. That's an easy spot to remove matting with a shorter blade and then be able to blend it in. You won't notice any chunks of hair missing. It's important when shaving with any blade, but particularly a skip tooth blade, that you're not digging into the skin. So you want to go on an angle so that the blade is just gliding around the dog. You do not want to shave down because that's when you can poke the skin. Now when I'm shaving underneath, I take their two front legs and I lift them up. Normally dogs stand. In this case, Rosie has decided she would like to sit. <laughs> But you use the clipper and then you just shave the area. She's a female, so I don't have to worry about getting into any male parts and avoiding them. So it's a lot easier. But if you are shaving a male, you have to be careful not to shave too far down, obviously. Or um, your male dog may turn into a female. So if you look at Rosie now, you can definitely see her puffy legs. So I definitely have to blend those in. I'm putting a 30 on my clipper. And then I'm going to be attaching a clipper comb. In this case, I am using a 5 8 which is your O comb. And you just clip that on to your 30 blade, and then you can shave. It's important that if you are using these comb attachments, that the hair has to be completely brushed and combed out. Otherwise, if you hit a mat, it will actually cause a hole in the haircut. So now I'm just shaving down on the legs. You don't have to be too wary about injuring a dog when you use comb attachments. 
So if you are a first time groomer or you're a home groomer, it's a lot safer, sorry, safer to use comb attachments than it would be to use a blade. So for beginners, that's definitely the best way to start. And it's pretty simple. You're just gonna shave the whole area. You can grab their legs and pull them out. Make sure that you are shaving every part of the leg nice and even. Don't worry if there's any lines or any spots that are longer because you're gonna go back through the dog with your scissors and your thinning shears to blend that up. So I keep hitting a mat on that side. I'm avoiding it for now and then I will just brush it out and go back over it. Otherwise, I will cause a hole in the haircut. This is my version of a teddy bear haircut, but it's a little bit sh on the shorter side than what I would normally do. You can just use longer blades if you want the teddy bear haircut to be a little bit fluffier. So in this case, I'm just taking my scissors and I'm cutting out some of the matting so that I can just shave over it nice and easy. Usually you don't use scissors to cut out matting, but I wasn't actually going to the skin. I was just cutting a little bit of the mats out, um, just cutting them kind of like what you would do with a mat splitter so that it would be easier for me to comb afterwards. You should definitely invest in a metal comb. You don't want to use a plastic comb because they will break. A metal comb will last forever. So again, you're just going to shave over all of the legs with your comb attachment. I'm going to speed this up. So I'm just going over all of the legs. A cool trick when shaving back legs or even front legs is to pick up the opposite leg when shaving so you can do the inside of the leg and that way they don't dance on you. Rosie doesn't dance on me but it does make it easier when shaving the inside of one leg to pick up the other. If you feel your clipper is stopping on anything there is probably a mat so just go over that area with your comb make sure there's no more mats. The clipper should never stop it just should just easily glide through the hair. So now she has some matted spots underneath both of her armpits. So I'm going to take my seven blade and shave those out. These areas are very easy to cut because there's folds of skin. So just be careful when you're doing it. In this case, I've been doing this for a long time, so I know I'm not going to catch her skin. I know that it looks like there's a big bald spot there, but I'll be able to blend that in with my thinning shears after and you won't even notice. This usually happens when dogs wear harnesses. These are the spots where the harness rubs up against the fur and causes them to get matted. I'm not sure if Rosie wears a harness, but that's usually why dogs get matted in those particular spots. So I'll usually shave both ways. The first way I like to shave is towards me, and then I'll go a little bit towards the dog's skin or torso, only once the area has been cleared out a bit so I can see exactly where their skin folds are. In this case, the matting goes right down a little bit, so I have to shave more than I wanted to. So I'm just skimming the area as opposed to shaving it right off. So now I'm taking a little bit of a longer blade and shaving that same spot. If I, the longer blade can get through, that's better. I usually shave their bellies with one blade shorter than what I shave their bodies with. For whatever reason, if you shave their bellies down with the same length, you tend to see a little bit fluff sticking out, so I don't necessarily love that. Now I'm taking my 10 blade and I'm shaving the sanitary areas. And I'm just going back and forth on those spots. I don't shave the entire groin going close with the 10. I'll just skim the rest of the groin with the 10, but I shave the actual sanitary area of the female dog with the 10, just like I do with the male but I try to avoid shaving the actual groin, so underneath the leg, because it can cause irritation. Remember that the 10 blade is a very short blade, so be as gentle and careful and slow as you can in those spots. You don't wanna nick any of those areas, that would definitely be painful and you'll be at risk for infection. When I do my haircuts, I usually start with the body, the legs, the sanitary, the feet. That's usually the process that I go. So now you wanna blend the areas on the legs that are a little bit longer. So the spot where the leg is going to meet the torso is going to be a bit long because we used two different lengths of blades. So I use my thinning shears and I just go over it as much as possible until the area is smooth. I want the legs to be noticeably longer than the body, but I don't want it to be noticeable in the spot where it happens. I want it to be gradual. 
and all around the leg is going to have bits and spots of longer pieces that your clipper left behind. So you just take the thinning shears and you go all around the legs. It's much easier when using thinning shears than if you're using straights because straights can cause a line that needs to be blended. So thinning shears just make it easier to blend. So when shaping the legs, you're going to use both your curved shears and your thinning shears to blend. I'll show you my curved shears in a moment. I'm speeding this up because it's basically the same thing on every leg. I used stylus edge thinning shears. They are my favorite ones so far. And you can also use chunkers to blend. It's easy when you're working on a dog like Rosie that's so well behaved. It can be a lot more difficult to achieve this type of haircut with a dog that moves a lot. In order to get a dog this well behaved for grooming, basically you just want to start from when they're a puppy and bring them regularly. There are some dogs that just never get used to it and that's just how it goes, but you can usually get most dogs to comply. So now I'm going to shave out her paw pads. I use my 30 blade. I was actually trained how to trim paw pads using scissors, so this is new for me. I'm just learning basically how to do this. But I figured out if you take the edge of the blade and shave, it's the best way to shave them without potentially cutting them. I don't shave in the paw pad and go straight down with my clipper, otherwise you could cut them. So I just kind of gently shave the hair, but I don't actually hit the skin when I go inside the pad. For pet owners at home, you can definitely just shave the hair that's sticking out of the pad. That's what's going to get dirty and get in the mud. You don't necessarily have to go inside the paw pad. But if you do, just be gentle and make sure that you don't go all the way in because you can cut the skin that's inside. The paw pad itself is actually pretty dense skin and is hard to cut. But the skin on the inside of the pad is not that thick and is very easily easy to slice. So now that the pads are shaved out, I'm going to round her feet. So I take my curved shears and I usually cut at the front of their foot first and then I round all the way around. If you cut at the front of the foot first or the paw, you will avoid showing the nails because you can actually feel with your scissors where the nails are. So you would just clip right before the nails and then you round all the way around the foot pad. I'm still not a master at this and sometimes the nail will show. That usually happens when the nails are super long and you can't cut them much shorter. So it's kind of hard to blend the hair over the nail to avoid showing it. I usually use my curved shears on the back of the legs as well to make a more rounded look until it gets to the foot pad. Before I started trimming the hair on the feet, I actually made sure that I brushed and combed the hair down just to make sure that there was no knots. So again, you cut the front of the foot and then you round all the way around using your curved shears. It's just easier. I know I'm flipping my curved shears inside out, but that's just because I actually normally trim foot pads with straight shears. I know how to use them better than the curves. That's just how I was trained. And then I lift the leg up and using my curved shears, I will trim the hair at the back of the foot. You don't want to trim the hair at the back of the foot while their foot is down because then the tips of your scissors might reach their paw pad and actually cut them. So I like to lift the leg up first and then trim. Another easy trick is to lift one leg up while you trim the other. That way it prevents them from dancing. When they dance around, you can sometimes make mistakes. It can also make it easier to do a full 360 with your scissors around the paw pad. And then I'll just go around with my curved shears and tidy up any little hairs that might be sticking out and out of place. And after that, it's time to move on to the face. So first I start out by shaving the tips of the inside of the ears with my 10 blade. You wanna be careful not to shave the hair that's sticking out, just the hair that's on the inside of the ear leather. You want the ears to be round and not pointed. So using my straight shears, I'm going to take the tips of the ears and cut straight across so that they are square. This haircut is easier to do on a dog that has more hair on their ears, but it still works with Rosie. Once I have squared the tips of the ears, using my curved shears, I'm going to cut around. I don't want the tips of the ears to be square, I want them to round. 
So I do that by trimming the points on the edge of the ears that I originally left square. Using my two fingers in my right hand, I hold the ear hair and I make sure to cut round. If you can see, I'm looking at any spots that might have harsh lines and I'm softening them up. This can be done with straight shears, but also done with curved shears. Using curved shears is a little bit easier to help you get that more rounded look. In this particular haircut, the ears are really the spot that you want to get perfect. If you get the ears looking like a teddy bear, then it's easy to get the rest of the haircut done. Now moving on to trimming the hair in between the eyes. I use my thinning shears. Sometimes I use my straight shears, but in this case, I don't want to cut too much hair off, so instead I use my thinners. I use them on both corners of the eyes and in between the eyes, and I use my fingers to pull the hair up before I trim. I recommend learning how to do a face with straight shears first. Thinning shears are nice to help you blend, but I actually learned how to do faces completely with straight shears and nothing else. Now I'm trimming the hair that goes inside the mouth when she licks. And then from there, I'm going to use my comb and comb the hair down in front of her eyes. And then I'm going to cut straight across. You want to be sure not to cut too far back. Pet owners often trim the hair in front of their dog's eyes and make it very short and choppy. The secret to that is to comb the hair in front of the eyes and cut only the hair that's hanging in front of the eyes. Now I'm going to use my sea comb, which is a 7-8, and I'm going to shave the top of the head with that to get it all nice and even. You can scissor this area as well, but I find it easier to use a clipper comb to make it more even. It looks like I'm pressing hard, but I'm really not. She's just putting her head down as I shave, which is common. Now I'm doing more combing and using my fingers just to make sure that everything is even and pulling out any hairs that might be loose. Now moving on to the snout. I actually like the length of her hair right now. I just want to tidy it up. So using my curved shears, I'm just trimming up the hairs that are pointing out. Now I'm combing the hair underneath her chin. This is not a good angle to record, but I'm just cutting around the bottom of the chin hair so that it rounds up to the top of the hair that's hanging off by her nose. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on the sides of her face. I'm just going to round it all the way up to her ear hair. You want her ear hair to match the hair that's going down her jawline to the front of her snout. I like to use my fingers to pull up the hair just to help me see any imperfections. You will always see imperfections at the end of the haircut that you're going to want to tidy up. So after you use your curved shears or your straight shears, you're going to take your thinners and you're just going to blend up the whole area. You don't want any harsh lines that your scissors may have left, so your thinners will help you to blend that in. A dog like this will most certainly shake after and you'll start to notice some imperfections. You can keep scissoring. But the fact of the matter is that eventually you do have to step away from the dog. Do the best that you can, but there will always be imperfections that you see that you want to fix. I'm just going to say thanks to my lovely model Rosie. You are a very well-behaved dog and you look super cute in your teddy bear cut.